Okay, so for this second example, we're looking to find the turning point of the quadratic function. We're going to do that by completing the square. So start by manipulating the right hand side. You can see here, I want to take, I want the, the coefficient of x squared really to be one, it makes my life look so much easier. So I'm going to factorize these first two terms because I can see that three goes into both of them. I'm just going to leave this term on its own. So I'm going to rewrite that as three x squared minus 8x, um, and I've got plus 10. So if I was to expand that bracket, I'd be back where I started. I'm now going to look to complete the square on this expression here, the x squared minus 8x. So I'm going to leave that 3 there in a bracket by itself. Now, when we're completing the square, we half the coefficient of x. So in this case, half of negative 8, which would be negative 4. So that will give me x subtract 4 all squared. Now, if I was to expand this bracket, I would get x squared, good. I would get a negative 8x, great. But I would also get a plus 16. Now, I don't want the plus 16. I don't have the plus 16 to start off with. So I'm going to have to take away 16 also. And then I've got plus 10, which I've just left alone. Now, final job, I need to expand the bracket with the 3. So that will give me 3x subtract 4 squared. Take 48, and I've still got my plus 10. And then just final job, bit tidying up. 3, oops, x minus 4 all squared. Subtract 38. We've now got it in completed square form, so we can simply write down the coordinates of the turning point. So it's the negative of the value in the bracket. So negative of negative 4 is positive 4, and then negative 38. And there's our answer. Other thing to possibly note that might come in, this is a positive quadratic. So it's a parabola shape that we're used to seeing. So that would make this point here a minimum value, not a maximum value. So our graph will be that shape.